there's an adage that says, the more things change, the more they remain the same. Despite the fact that our Old Testament and epistle lessons today take place about 500 years apart, the more things change, the more they remain the same. In our magnificent text from the book of Nehemiah, we find this people called Israel finally returning home after their exile to Babylon. Good old Persian King Cyrus has finally said, y'all can go home. But they're not going home to what they left because Jerusalem's been razed, the temple is gone, everything that they have associated with home is gone. And no matter how faithfully over that 40, 50 year period, they had tried in their minds to recreate all of the things about worship and about daily life that had made that world particularly theirs, they've been gone from that world and in a different culture that actually would threaten to undo that world for them. So coming home is a very unusual kind of thing because they've got to rebuild not only habitat, but they've somehow got to rebuild the life that they've known with God. And rebuilding the temple, that's one thing. Rebuilding and understanding of walking with God, that's something else entirely. So they have come back and busied themselves with the tasks of rebuilding Jerusalem. And then Ezra comes along and calls them all out and says, come out, we're going to meet, we're going to gather together as one community. And when Ezra gathers them all, Ezra begins to read from the Torah to them. Ezra begins to read the law, because no matter how much they think they remember these words, no matter how much some of these folks may have thought they'd committed this to memory and to life, hearing Ezra read those words is going to have a powerful impact on them. We're told in this text that many begin to weep as they hear these words, to weep. Perhaps they weep because they've longed for those words in their lives. Perhaps they weep because they know their disobedience. But Ezra begins to read and to give understanding to those words. And if you guys think my sermons are long, so Ezra keeps this up from early in the morning till noontime. And they're all still there absorbing, letting these words of God wash over them. And Ezra tells them, this is not a time for weeping. Please don't weep. This is a time for celebrating. This is a time for acknowledging that who we are and what we are are people of God, and these words are the words that God has given us for our living, and we need to be excited and we need to celebrate that we are reunited with our home and reunited with these words of God that tell us who we are. And if somebody's not here to enjoy a meal with us, then let's make sure they get a meal, but this is a time for joyful celebration, joyful celebration. Do we always think about hearing the words of God's law as a time of joyful celebration? Because we should. 
Ezra is exactly right. We should, because God has given us those words for all to be well with us. For all to go well with us. And our reaction to those words should be, hallelujah. This people called Israel, they may have been separated from their land and from the outward practice of all of their traditions, but the word can bring them back. Can bring them back to the place that they had been forced to leave. Now let's talk about why this text bears some very striking similarity to our text from 1 Corinthians. Paul is writing letters to the Christians in Corinth. This is an interesting place because this church, these followers of Jesus in this very nice place called Corinth, this very cosmopolitan place called Corinth, they are Jew and Gentile. They come from all kinds of walks of life. And what they are doing, like these scattered children called Israel, 500 years before them, is they're trying to come together with the thing that unifies and makes them one. And the thing that makes them one is the same thing. It's the words and the teachings of Jesus and the spirit dwelling in them for them to be able to go forth with the ministry that Jesus has just begun. And so there they are, coming from all of their varied perspectives, coming from all of the places from which they may have come, using the particular lenses that they have to be able to see the world. They bring all of this into their church, just like us. They bring all of this into their church, and we know how easy it is when we all are bringing different perspectives and backgrounds and feelings and emotions. Sometimes all those things don't quite match up. So what we heard from Paul in this 12th chapter of the first letter to the Corinthians last week was that these were gifts, all these unique, amazing gifts that we have. They are gifts, all gifts given from God, all things to be valued, because all of those gifts together are things that God can use to bring forth God's kingdom. And now Paul elaborates and says, not only are all these gifts, but all of us, every single one of us, is a member of the body. And we're all important members of the body. We can't look at one another and say, oh, but there's no need of you. Because everything that we bring to the body, everything that we bring to the body, is what makes the body rich, it's what makes it possible for us to do God's work in the world. We can't do without each other. What an amazing way for us to see ourselves in ministry, to realize we can't do without one another. <clears throat> We need all of our gifts. We need all of our voices. We need all of our strengths. We need all of the things that make us uniquely who we are. Because all of those pieces become part of our body, and it takes that entire body of Christ 
to do the work that we are called to do. And so here we sit, 2,000 years later, hearing all these words and being reminded, first and foremost, we are rooted in the word of God. What shapes us, what forms us as people of God is the word of God. And we come together so that we can break open that word with one another and grow with one another in that word. We know what God intends for us and the good that God intends for us from God's law. And coming together in this place is that time, that intentional time for us, just as Ezra brought all of those children called Israel out. It's that time for us to come out, to hear the word and to be reminded of God's incredible love for us. And it is also the time for us to be reminded of how dependent we are on one another. We're dependent on the ways that we are called to serve. We are dependent on sharing our voices and our knowledge with one another because all of those things strengthen us as a body and help us answer God's call all the more. We couldn't have had better texts on an annual meeting Sunday because these texts remind us of everything that we are and are called to be in this place. In just a few minutes, we are going to offer up all of the ministry that God has allowed us to share in this place for God to bless it, for God to bless us. This is the day that we break open those scriptures together and learn from one another. And this is the day that we recommit ourselves to loving one another, to loving all of God's people, to serving all of God's people throughout the world, to reminding ourselves, lest we ever forget that we are the body. We are the body. We can't do it without all of us. May God continue to bless us. May God continue to strengthen us. May God continue to empower us. For there is much work to do. And we are all good laborers for God's vineyard. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen.